Hey everybody, um, <clears throat> so uh, one of the games that I want to get into, one of the reasons why I've been trying to like build out um, a table, you know, or just like kind of like uh, have like stuff that's not specifically sci-fi or not specifically fantasy, like just hills and stuff like that and like trees and shrubs and stuff is because I want to play, I play all kinds of games. Like I'm kind of all over the place with like the uh, genres of games that I like. So I wanted to play uh, Dead Man's Hand. And um, this game is very similar to like Frostgrave, if you've ever played it, or um, Stargrave. Um, it's like, it's a D20 system where uh, like Dungeons and Dragons, where a, a one is a critical failure, where you're like out of ammo, <laughs> and then a twenty is a critical success, where you just you know put it right between the guy's eyes. Um, <clears throat> really, you know, fun fun game. It also has a card mechanic, which is which is cool that I like. Um, you know, you uh, you you have a a hand of cards, and then you deal out cards every um, every round. And that's how you figure out, uh, like, initiative. The initiative order is by um, putting down cards. So I, uh, I, it's a, it's a UK or the the publisher. The the miniatures are by like North Star, right? So, but I don't think the game is Osprey. I think it's somebody else. But it's like it feels very much like Frostgrave. It, you know, it plays kind of similar, um, but. Uh, <clears throat> so the the official stuff, the official terrain stuff, like um, that you can get, are MDF buildings, and they're really cool. They're really cool buildings. <laughs> I actually grabbed some before I even knew about this game. I I grabbed the official like foreground um, Dead Man's Hand buildings uh, because I just thought they were really cool. I was like, I love those. <laughs> I wanted to put them together before I even had a game to go with them, basically. But then, you know, I, I found out about the game. But what I what I did was I went ahead and kitbashed some of their official stuff to make it more in line with what I'm going for. Um, so these are really cool. They have their... It's just an MDF kit, but it's like this is the kind of like the frame, just the frame out of the of the building. And then it has playable interiors. Um, and that's like part of the game too, is that you have like cover where you can be like, um, yeah, I mean, cover, cover takes a, takes a big, um, takes a big role. Like it kind of plays like infinity but how I want Infinity to play. <laughs> uh, if you're an Infinity player, it's like very streamlined. But um, so anyways, yeah, I will show you guys how I how these go together. And then this is a another one of those little bit experimental builds where I was trying out some different things that I hadn't tried out before, but that I you know, I wanted to try out that I was thought were going to work, but I wasn't sure that they were going to work. But everything came out looking really cool, and I really like, really, really like this thing. And, and I, I can't wait to play games with this. So anyways, yeah, let's uh, let's put together some, some more foreground uh, MDF stuff. <laughs> so yeah, as I mentioned before, this is another foreground kit. And uh, I'm a big fan. I, I really like Foregrounds stuff. They're uh, a UK company. And then this uh, this publisher is a, a UK company too. Um, but like I said, I, I actually bought this stuff before I even knew that I liked the game. I, uh, I grabbed these kits or a couple of these. And uh, one thing that I like about these that's nice about them is they came with directions. <laughs> The, the foreground kits and a lot of MDF kits in general don't always come with directions. So I thought that was nice. But these are pretty straightforward, uh, how they go together. It's just a frame out. Okay. 
I have learned to uh, dry fit these things though and make sure that they're going on the right way before I actually glue them up. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is very straightforward. Just uh, raising, raising a barn, pretty, pretty straightforward and easy. So one um, little kind of optional upgrade thing that I like to use when I'm gluing things up, especially like kits like this, or if I'm making something from scratch, is I have this little glue up tray and um, all it is, is it's just a, a piece of metal that has magnets on it that kind of hold everything in place. And uh, it just comes in super handy with, uh, with stuff like this where you have to like hold a right angle for a little while. So one of the things that I tried on this, and I'm not sure if I, this is the right way to do this, um, I tried uh, mixing up some black paint and uh, PVA glue to glue everything up. And um, I, I actually ordered some black super glue. And the thinking was that if there was any of this stuff that showed through in the final end product, that it would just look like some kind of like a tar or like a rosin or something that was some kind of pitch that was being used to, to like, or some weathering, you know, uh, because I wasn't going to really paint these too much. I was just going to let the MDF show through. And then I didn't want anything glossy showing through, but the, um, the black super glue didn't show up in time. So I wanted to just use like a paintbrush to, to paint it on in all the, the joints. Um, and I had mixed, uh, mixed success with that. Uh, I'm not sure that it's the right way to do this, but it has its pluses and minuses. One of the nice things is that you can use a paintbrush to just paint it on all over in the spots. Um, and then it's either a plus or a minus that it has a really long working time. So it just takes a while to kind of set up and then it needed to be held in place with uh, with the magnets for, the, for a while. And then I'm not sure that it is the actual, like strongest bond for these. For instance, gluing up this uh, roof section, it's very, I think it's actually very accurate. <laughs> the, um, the little roof frames, they're, they're pretty um, close to like what, what real frames on houses like this would look like, but they are not that fun or easy to put together. It's a little bit tedious trying to get everything into the right spot to even glue up. And if I was using super glue, I could just, it would dry super fast I could hit it with some like miter fast or something like that to make it set up almost instantly. But I'm not sure. I mean, I think that maybe I needed that working time. I needed to be able to get in there with the paintbrush in order to actually get these things together. So <laughs> I still have another one of these to put together. Oh, I mean, well, I have a couple. So we'll see when the black super glue shows up if it, uh, if it makes it easier or more difficult, I will keep you posted. So I did most of this project just in one afternoon. Um, I would uh, work on one thing and then let it dry for a while and then go back to the other piece and uh, work on that one, let that one dry for a while. Uh, so while the roof was drying, I went ahead and just measured out the, uh, the sides of the building and, um, it doesn't need to be too precise. Like basically I just wanted to have a bunch of strips of, uh, of balsa wood so that I could, I would have like one complete side 
of a building and then I could chop those up later as I went on and then just have like the correct size lengths uh, to chop down. But I ended up um, just kind of like breaking them with my fingers and stuff and uh, so didn't need to be too precise. But uh, um, another one of my little optional upgrade things that I have that, uh, that I really like and I highly recommend it if you're gonna do any scratch building or um, it just comes in super handy if you need to kind of repeat any little like cuts on like wood or styrene um, little bits like this is um, I have a, uh, the chopper and um, this I think mine is um, short line model railroad um, and uh, all it is is it's just a little razor blade that's mounted on a little arm and then you just chop chop with it um, and it uh, it just makes it so much easier when you have to repeat the same motion over and over and over again um, and like you could totally do this by hand this is just balsa wood they're just little balsa wood strips but it just makes it so much easier to have the little arm set up so you can just chop 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 whenever you want to like mass produce little things like this or line things up and get um, uh, like precise right angle cuts with like balsa or yeah styrene any kind of wood stuff like that so I recommend it if you're gonna do any scratch building or even just you know for things like this for uh, MDF projects So another one of the experimental things that I tried, um, I tried making my own stain. So uh, what this is, is just ink and rubbing alcohol, like 70% 70, 70 uh, um, IPA, uh, isopropanol rubbing alcohol. And um, so this is sepia ink. The, the problem is, is that it's just not dark enough. Um, the reason why, uh, the reason why it's, the reason why it's IPA is because rubbing alcohol will penetrate into the wood and it won't raise the wood grain and it won't make the wood, uh, warp as much because it has like a much faster drying time and it's also like a solvent. So it's going to penetrate into the wood a little bit better. So I wanted to try this because, well, I just wanted to stain the wood, but they just came out looking like, like fresh, like new, new wood. I mean, if that was the look that I was going for, then that would be great, but I wanted old weathered wood. So I wasn't happy that these came out looking like freshly milled um, wood that just came from like Home Depot or something like that. So <laughs> I was like, oh, well, you know, that stain was a failure. Um, it wasn't, uh, but I was just going to kind of experiment with that and see if I could get kind of like a darker look on it. So I thought, all right, well, I will just, I'll try and open up the wood grain a little bit. Like maybe just give these guys some texture. Um, and, uh, uh, just try and like open up the wood grain so that if I try and stain them with something else, it'll penetrate a little bit better. And uh, I didn't need to do that. <laughs> I'll come back to this later. So what I tried was I tried to open up the wood grain and then I tried a dark uh, furniture polish. And this is just this is like a scratch remover. It's like um, if you have hardwood floors or, or wood, something, and you want to cover up some scratches on it and it's a dark wood, then you can use this to kind of uh, take those scratches out. But this stuff penetrated way worse than the rubbing alcohol did. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going back to the drawing board again. So I did. So here is my fresh batch of stain. Uh, 
I didn't think that this was like a total failure. It was just that the color was wrong. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna try making a much, much darker color. So what? here's, here's how I made my stain. Uh, so I'm just using 70% isopropyl alcohol. And then I have a, an empty uh, pasta sauce jar. And, uh, and then I'm just gonna fill that up like most of the way, good, pretty much the whole way. And then uh, I just went ahead and dumped in a bottle of black ink. And um, yeah, the, uh, the black ink that I had on hand was the good stuff. I didn't want to have to go to the store to buy any more. So I went ahead and dumped one of my bottles of Dollar Rowney FW Color Fast. Uh, yeah, my, my good stuff, the good ink. <laughs> so you definitely don't need the good ink to do this, but this is what I had on hand. So yeah, I just dumped a whole bottle of, uh, of black ink in there with the isopropanol and, uh, and then mixed it up. Hmm. Makes me sad just watching this. It's, it's not expensive, but it's good stuff. So the part that made me happy though, was that it works like a charm. These, uh, these uh, planks had already been stained, but uh, they're just too light. So I just dunked them again and uh, they came out looking absolutely perfect. They came out looking exactly like the color that I wanted it to. So, you know, now I know, and I have two jars of this stuff. I have one jar that makes fresh cut wood and then one jar that makes old uh, aged wood. And uh, you could use this stuff for other things too, like just to, to weather things and um, it, it would make a good wash on anything that's slightly porous. But, uh, but yeah, you just kind of dunk them in on both sides and um, and then just left them out to dry. And then it, with, with this stuff too, another thing that you could do is if you had used up uh, like markers, like felt tip markers or anything like that, like drawing pens and or drawing markers, you can pop them in rubbing alcohol and it will take, it'll leach out all of that color and you can make your own stains that way. So that's kind of where I got the idea for this, but uh, yeah, works like a charm. So next up, I went ahead and did some airbrushing and uh, I, um, I just wanted the, I wanted to sort of tie everything together because there were, there were parts of the MDF that were just sort of the wrong color. Um, so I'm using some Vallejo Model Air U.S. Air Force Brown, and uh, I just figured that it was kind of the right color to just tie everything together. But I'm not covering up all of the, like the black um, glue. I'm just kind of, um, just kind of tying those colors together because I actually want to use the glue as like a sort of pre-shading. Um, there are like a, a weathering um, but I want the, the other parts of the wood to all look like they've been out in the sun and kind of aging and, um, just like the same color because like the, um, the sides of the, the little laser cuts, they have laser burns on them. And then the, um, the different pieces of MDF kind of have like slightly different colors. So I just wanted to kind of tie everything together with the airbrush, not really painting, painting, just kind of shading. So here's the part where I kind of wish that I had that uh, black super glue because uh, when I went in to do the, uh, the roofs and then the, the walls and stuff, some of those pieces came apart. I mean, not in a really bad way. It's not a bad look or anything. Like, uh, you can see that I'm just kind of like breaking up boards with my fingers and uh, putting them on there. But the thing is, is that 
this, uh, this is PVA glue. So if you don't sort of hold it in place, um, if you just kind of let it do its own thing, then it like slides around and it, it can warp and uh, kind of like pop apart and things like that. So I kind of wish that I had both. <laughs> um, you know, Amazon, if you, could, if you could just deliver that stuff already, that would be great. Um, but yeah, so I'm just kind of going around and gluing up these um, uh, broken sections of roof. And uh, you can see that the uh, the wood stain or my my rubbing alcohol stain, it um, it kind of penetrated. It penetrated into like the surface of the wood, but then when you break them apart, there's still that little exposed spot that that I had to um, uh, I had to restain later. But uh, but yeah, I thought you know I thought oh well I'll be like chopping these down to kind of make them like exact little like planks when I'm putting them on to the walls and stuff. But no, no, I just wanted to break them with my fingers. That was way more fun. So the idea was though, when I cut these down was that I was just gonna have some little sections of wall that were unbroken but uh, it helps to match those sections up to the pieces of wall that you actually cut them for. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still just gonna kind of like break them with my fingers and stuff and, uh, and glue them on. And uh, I ended up making just mostly broken sections of wall anyways, but um, yeah, I, I wanted to have the right size lumber and, uh, and then glue that on. But um, yeah, I mean, the, when, when, I, when I glued these up, I, I kind of glued them on the wrong way. And then I had to like chop them down to get them down to the right size later. And then when I was chopping them down, they popped off because the PVA isn't that strong that it can be like cut on like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that was the idea. Best laid plans, you know. Yeah, here's the part where it uh, it pops right off. Yep, right there. <laughs> and I did just leave it like that, like. Um, but you can see how they're kind of like wiggly and uh, and loose. Um, I uh, I don't hate the look, and it's like totally fine. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. I I, I guess I uh, I guess I'm jury still out on this. Uh, on the, the PVA glue and black paint, if that's if that works for this the best way or not. So here's another experimental thing, or like new to me, that I've never used before. Um, so I had these little model railroad shingles. They didn't have very many of them, but um, all these are is just like laser cut uh, paper and they're supposed to be HO scale. They look gigantic for HO scale, but um, you can see like there's another little section of my roof right there that kind of popped off when I was handling it later. And um, so, but what I did was I used these little roof shingles, the, the, uh, the paper things to um, secure all of my roof sections a little bit better. Um, I'm not sure the best way to even like to glue those down. If I mean, what I mean by that is um, like what would be the best way to like weight them down so that they would stay in place. And uh, also I started on the top and you're supposed to start on the bottom with these. So I, I, I figured it out and then I stopped myself, but, uh, but yeah, this is another kind of experimental fun little thing for me. So yeah, the way that you're supposed to do these is that you start from the bottom row and then work your way up. 
and um, this uh, this stuff, the, the PVA glue and um, black paint, it does work really well for this part. Um, I, I was just trying to sort of glue down the, um, the shingles, but, um, but I ended up going over them afterwards and then like sealing everything down. So like I want to create like one solid mass of this stuff to uh, keep everything on with the roof. Like I want to keep everything in place with the, um, the roof, like it'll help hold it together. But also the um, the black paint, it looks good as like a tar paper. Um, and then like tar paper is period accurate. Like that's something that uh, that they would have used to um, to make roof shingles out of. So it, it does look like a good uh, tar paper roof. So yeah, after I had stuck them all on there, I, uh, I didn't do a very good job of um, like keeping the black under them anyways. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna cover all of these with this uh, with this stuff and then seal them down. But uh, but yeah, I, I actually really like it. I, 10 out of 10 would would do it again. Then uh, once it had dried, then I, I went ahead and uh, chopped off the, uh, the excess paper with a razor. Um, and uh, I did need to kind of get these like flush or, or do my absolute best because on one side of this little roof, it has to sit flush with the, um, like the front area. So yeah, I was kind of trying to do my best to actually true it up. So next I uh, wanted to do some dry brushing, um, but I wanted to try something new. So I, uh, I grabbed one of these um, stipple brushes or it's a um, it's a, a stencil brush I think and it's basically it's like a really really tough brush like a um, like a hog's hair or at least like synthetic or something um, but uh, basically I was trying to do like a stipple thing with this brush and um, I was being like really like careful with it at first trying to not glob on a whole bunch of paint and then just kind of blot off some as I went to get that broken paint look. But um, you don't need to be precious with these things at all. <laughs> like they're meant for this. And so as I went on, like I just kept, I, I took less and less paint off of it as I started. And then um, I was just kind of like working my way down. Um, so I wanted the I wanted the paint to look like it had chipped off the least like further up the building, uh, especially if there was any little awning areas like I wanted it to look like that was kind of a little bit protected. And then as I got further down, I was going to make that wood look like more and more rotten at the bottom and more weathered because of, uh, yeah, rain, stuff like that, snow. So eventually I did switch to like a brush brush. I was using just a, a craft brush using a flat. Um, and part of this too could be like the paint that I'm using because I'm using craft paints and craft paints have like really crappy coverage. So, but it looks perfect for like broken weather paint like this. Um, so I'm just, I, I did kind of take a little bit off the brush and then I went in and, and just kind of like uh, sort of like dry brushed, over brushed it. But I was trying to go with the wood grain. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it looks uh, looks cool. Like I really like the look. Definitely like the look a lot.
And uh, I use that same uh, light gray, or yeah, kind of off-white light gray on the, uh, the roof shingles too, just to make them pop out. And uh, yeah, I mean, I really like the look. So I was going for, I wanted to kind of bump up the contrast. I was going for like, kind of like a black and white kind of look, but uh, with this really aged, like weathered looking wood. Um, so yeah, you know, um, trying to bump up the contrast because like, when we look at these things, like we look at them from like three feet away, uh, high up on a table, and then um, just the more the more contrast, the better. So after I had gone around and done some dry brushing, I went back in with my uh, black wood stain. And uh, mostly I wanted to just cover up those spots where I broke the wood and then it kind of like exposed some little spot in between or uh, where the stain didn't soak in. But I also ended up putting this stuff down, um, well like it's to soak into like the sides of the paper where it didn't have paint on them. But uh, I also just kind of weathered the wood a little bit more in some spots. Like, um, especially kind of around the, the bottom of this thing, where the, the rain and dirt and mud would have collected. And uh, I, I really like the look. I really like all of the high contrast, high key, uh, high contrast. So for the last part, just to tie everything together, um, I went ahead and, and uh, did one last uh, overbrush, dry brush with some, some craft paints. Um, it, I use a color that I really like. It's uh, Folk Art Iced Coffee. <laughs> um, I, I really like that color. I think it's like 85 cents a tube at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, but yeah, I just want to kind of do a dry brush just to kind of tie everything together with the wood and cover up any spots where I, um, got paint, like didn't want it. But yeah, guys, I'm super happy with how this one came out. I really like this one. <laughs> so, uh. I hope you try it. I hope you got something out of this and uh, I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves.